So we will begin with the end in mind here. Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing and Change Part 11, Listen. In today's episode, Listen is listening for what hasn't been said yet. So that's kind of our metaphysical theme. Um, we wrote a poem called It. Sometimes we have glimpses at the beginning, full, complete, and then we're grinding away, and then it turks over and turns into its own thing. But we reflected, well, sometimes our glimpses are only partial. So, hey, we have glimpses partial and glimpses full, complete. Um, we worked a lot more with our chord sorts. Uh, we're talking about now the idea of oral animation as well as visual animation. And there are so many things we're going to work on right now. And we have kind of a new metaphor in mind that that a lot of the music we've been doing is like a texture. We've woven a texture. And then you can take, like when you make clothing, you take the cloth that has a custom texture and a weaving, and then you cut pieces out of it and you fit it to a pattern and a shape. So that's kind of our reflection part. In terms of what we worked on, we first of all made an arpeggio and chord sorts concept diagram, uh, which is this thing here. Well, I hate when you move like that. Let's see if we can't make it easier to read. And the idea here was we've become very familiar with the idea of arpeggios that you have a low, middle, high note. And then there are six different ways to put the low, middle, high in order. And there they are. Low, middle, high. Low, high, middle. Over here is a high, low, middle. Uh, but then we are talking about how we represent chords in our chord reference sheets. And as long as a chord fits within the, the octave, which are these two lines here, we're okay. Uh, and we'd like to show it in chord root order. We'll show you an example in a minute. But sometimes when you put it in chord root order, the... the top note or the top two notes poke out. They poke out of the octave and then we, we push them right back down here you know, because reasons that make a lot of sense. So we got to knock this back to where we're used to. Back to where we're used to. So anyway, we did, we worked on that. We had, we had some ahas about that. Um, we kept working with our New heptatonic parallel scale O2, which is this thing here. And what we did is we took our darkness composition and we started populating the chords down here. There's 120 chords and now we have 44 of them are in place, like these three. Now these are in what we call chord root order, like that one. But you see, that one's poking way out of the C4 octave, and theoretically we should bring this all the way down, but we're not doing that yet. So we just said, hey, it's in chord root voicing order uh, from darkness one for now. We're just, we just wanted to get a start. So not bad, 44 out of 120, that's about, you know, th that's a third. So in addition to that, we went ahead and started the spreadsheet that on the left-hand side that goes with this on the right. And if you recall the HP02 scale, um, what's special about it compared to the traditional one? And the traditional one, these gray keys, D flat, G flat, are not used. But in this one, the D and the F are not used. So that was kind of fun. We also began exploring... Um, an animation for darkness one and the and that's here right here so now we'll play it a little bit for you but what is more interesting for, at least from the what we just mentioned if you look at it from the pitch wheel shape watch what happens as all the notes get used
except for this one and this one and that is the this is the D and the F so um, so we're exploring how we might want to animate that piece we like how it sounds we played it at open mic people liked it a lot so we're, that's that's an idea for next time so we did that then we have so many things we're working on we have been working on what we call the chord sort variations which look unlike uh, this uh, we're going to put this into a more easy to comprehend point of view um, and we also need to make sure we play the right things so if you recall the chord sort chord sorts we started with just listening to the chords in chord root ascending order so then we started adding the um, arpeggios and what we did here is we associated the one twos up with the two ones down because it sounds cool but you see that's a one two up and it matches this one which is a two one down but then but then we made a new line so that was called up inverse down this is up reverse inverse down makes sense right yeah so what happens here let's solo this line is it goes up down up down and then we're still working on that and then finally what we're calling the compressed line is is way over here where we took out all these eighth notes and we just let it rip <laughs> and then what's really fun what's really fun is to play them together like this And you can hear rising and falling and then rising and falling within the rising and falling so we really like where that's going so we have more to work on that and then did we mention we're doing a lot of things here um, chat got interested in um, what are the recipes for making minor melodies into major and major melodies into minor and all that so we went ahead and we made what we call sample mode conversion score now this one, we're going to play the whole thing for you and then we will, um, that'll bring us home. You will recognize the major melody, but then the bottom line is that we have, we have like six variation, minor variations of the same major melody, two of which can be played simultaneously, which puts it into full mode. So uh, let's kick it up just a little bit. And here we go. about that among other things is row your boat was the first song we ever played on an instrument in elementary school when they handed out those little flutophone thingies we had sung in you know Sunday school choir we had sung in grade school music class looking at a book and just reading by you know singing 
looking at the words and singing by ear because the teacher sang for us or I, I don't remember if the teacher played the piano or not but we like that we like that a lot so now to come full circle so to speak and do that simple melody and then all these variations and then to play them together in full mode we think is kind of neat so our ideas for next time are to keep working with all these projects in play like keeping plates spinning the new o2 scale and getting the reference sheet populated um, the listening chord sort variations uh, uh, make an aural animation for the it poem uh, keep working with these other pieces lots and lots that's kind of intriguing us now shout outs to nagar icer and just take them and miss cleo who stopped by we appreciate you do take care do tune in next time to see what happens do keep on streaming